Today was a very sad day. I unfortunately had to say goodbye to my beloved Sony A7R2. He has decided to pass on. This camera has been through absolutely everything with me. I've taken this to festivals, it's been to Coachella, it's been to Switzerland in bloody rainstorms, it's been to Finland. This camera has been everywhere with me. And unfortunately today, he was on his last legs. So hashtag RIP Sony A7R2, get it trending. Oh, I can't wait to spend money. <laughs> What is good, everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be discussing handheld cinematography and why I love to shoot handheld and why I think you lot should shoot handheld more. many photographers are going to be watching this video as well as cinematographers or videographers. Now if you are a photographer and you're thinking about getting into film, I feel like this video can help out a lot and I do believe that handheld videography is probably the best way to capture videos in my opinion and to make it feel almost realistic. That's the word I'm looking for. Handheld videography is realistic. That's why I love it so much. I would say the best thing about shooting handheld is that it really allows you to drag the viewer into the scene that you are filming. Quick example, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Game of Thrones. Now there's a certain episode in Game of Thrones in the Battle of the Bastards where Jon Snow, who is like the main character, he is literally in the worst imaginable place a human could be. He's literally on the battlefield. There's horses charging in front of him. There's people getting killed. It's complete carnage. Now that scene was actually shot handheld and it really, really helped bring the viewer into that scene and you're like watching it and you think you're in battle with him because of the camera and the motion. There's all stuff flying around, there's swords, there's, it's, it's carnage pretty much. This scene is mad and the impact that it has when it's shot in handheld is so, so good. Shooting handheld is absolutely unbelievable for capturing the viewer into the scene and giving off that same vibe that the character is feeling to the audience. Now, of course, the obvious reason as to why I love shooting handheld and I'm sure many of you can relate to this, you don't need a gimbal. You do not need to lug around a gimbal. It is a lot easier to film handheld than it is to set up a gimbal or balance a gimbal. Bearing in mind gimbals are getting very good and very fast at balancing nowadays with the new Ronin that's come out. Let's face it, gimbals are expensive. They take a while to set up. You've got to like line up your shot. It's just a lot easier to get the camera out your bag, bust on a lens, go handheld. As well, it just makes me feel a lot more relaxed and chilled out on set because it's like less things to worry about. I haven't got to worry about setting up a gimbal and I don't have to like lug a big gimbal around with me if I know that I can get the shot handheld. I would say handheld footage is more for action-y scenes or shorter scenes rather than longer scenes where maybe a gimbal is required or something not very exciting is happening and it's just people talking or whatnot then using a gimbal will be required, but you don't really want to shoot long scenes handheld because it will just end up giving the viewer a bit of a headache and they just won't be able to sort of keep up with it. So I'd say handheld is more for quick cut, high energy scenes. Another example, take a look at these two scenes that I shot of Harry doing some fast paced movement. Now I shot both of these handheld and this is the example that I was talking about where if it's a fast scene or you're sort of filming someone like training or doing some sort of fast movement, shooting handheld handheld like these two scenes can really help sort of the fast paced edit if that makes sense. If you cut them both together it can work really really well because he's moving really fast and you want the camera to be moving with the same motion which is what I mean when I say filming stuff that is very high energy. Some of you may be thinking now well how do you shoot handheld like what's the best way to shoot handheld and how do I get better at it? Now let me tell you the bigger camera you have like a Sony FX6 or a C200 if you've got that rigged up and you've got like a handle on and a monitor, it's gonna be a lot easier to shoot handheld if you've got a much bigger setup. Whereas if you have a smaller camera, it's gonna be a lot harder, which is why I have added a small rig onto my Sony because I can build this rig up and I can put a top handle on, I've got a side handle, and it makes the small camera into a much bigger system or setup, which then allows me to shoot handheld a lot easier as I'm not like holding a small body and I'm like this and I'm like shaking. I've got a big rig on and I can 
crop it and make all this madness and attach loads of handles and whatnot to this, which will then allow me to shoot a lot more sturdy handheld footage, which is why, again, I have a small rig for my Sony. One thing you need to remember is points of contact when you're shooting handheld. So I'm gonna put a lens on this right now and I'm gonna show you what I mean when I say points of contact. So for instance, this is like a rig, of course, with a heavy lens on and I'm obviously my camera body. Now I've got a handle here and I've got a point of contact here. I've got a point of contact here and I've got another point of contact on my arm. So I can literally tuck my arm in like that. I've got this really sturdy and then I can either use this to focus or I can hold it like that and I can just like manual focus if I need to or I'll hold it like this if I'm getting like a tracking shot and I'm already focused on a subject. So by adding a lot of things to your rig or to your setup, if you have a smaller camera, can really help your handheld footage. Now, small rigs, they're not cheap. They're about 70 pounds with like a handle, but I would say if you're shooting a lot of handheld stuff, in your like work or your production, investing in a small rig or something that is gonna beef up your camera if you have a small camera can be really, really helpful when shooting handheld because you're gonna have multiple points of contact. To be honest, thinking about it right now, if you are filming someone or you're filming a scene of a character who is doing dancing or is boxing or doing something that involves any movement, you need to be as reactionary to them as possible. So if they're jumping up in the air or they're doing all sorts of movement, you need to almost be in sync with them. So by communicating with that person and asking, you know, what are you gonna do? What sort of movement are you gonna do? Just so you know what movement you need to do or what direction you need to film in can also really help if you're filming something, again, which is really fast paced by communicating with your subject or the person or whoever it is that you are filming by communicating with them, it's gonna really help keep that flow in your handheld footage. I'm actually working on a short film throughout this whole year. I've been to so many locations to shoot scenes for the film and I would say about 70% of the shots which I have shot already is handheld because I just love the way it looks of course if a gimbal was needed and is needed in the film then of course use the gimbal but maybe challenge yourself if you're watching at the moment and you want to have a go at shooting handheld stuff try shooting like a short one minute cinematic of something handheld and see if you like it or not leave the gimbal at home don't don't take the gimbal with you leave it in its box and let it collect dust for a week and just shoot handheld see how you get on because Personally, I love handheld. I can guarantee anyone watching who has experienced this, you feel just so much more relaxed when shooting handheld. Hopefully this video has helped anyone who is a bit frightened, I would say, of shooting handheld footage because that was me for quite a long time. I would always bring a gimbal with me because I was just too scared to shoot handheld. I was like, oh no, it's gonna be shaky, this, that, and the other. Just don't think about that. You know, just challenge yourself to shoot in a handheld for a week. I can guarantee you, you'll have a lot of fun. But with that being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you did like this video, don't forget to leave a like, rating, subscribe if you are new and I shall see you all very very soon got a big one coming don't don't miss it next week big video take care peace <sighs> what camera should i buy now to replace my a7r2 let me know don't say nikon for anyone that says nikon you're getting blocked I've gone for more of like a dark moody setup today because usually i've got lights everywhere i usually got lights on the shelf i've got a light here but today i thought Go a bit more dark and moody. I'm feeling it, digging it.